Hi, I'm Esther from Skylark First Aid. We're doing a short video today about anaphylaxis and how to treat somebody with an adrenaline auto injector, an AAI. Now the most famous of these is an EpiPen and everybody calls all of the different brands EpiPen. EpiPen is the brand name, it's the manufacturer of this particular type of adrenaline auto injector. There are others out there there's another one called Jext, which looks like this, a Jext um, auto injector. And there's another brand that's sometimes seen called Emeraid, E-M-E-R-A-D-E. -E. So they are all adrenaline auto injectors. They're not all EpiPens, only that one. But t people tend to call them all EpiPens, which, you know, that's fine. These have got a shot of adrenaline inside them. And this is used to treat somebody having an anaphylactic reaction. Now, anaphylaxis is a severe, life-threatening allergic reaction. And this person will become very ill very, very quickly. You, things like nuts, sesame, perhaps shellfish, several different types of food, wasp stings, bee stings, things like that can trigger off this anaphylactic reaction in people. And somebody who's got diagnosed anaphylaxis should carry um, EpiPens around with them. And everybody should carry two, and this is a mistake people often make. Because the GP sometimes only gives you two, they prescribe you two in total, people think it's a good idea to perhaps leave one at home and then put one in their bag or whatever and carry it around with them. Really, somebody with anaphylaxis should carry two auto injectors around with them all the time because often the contents of one isn't enough to help them. They might need the contents of two. So if you know anybody, got a colleague with anaphylaxis, ask them about, do they bring their auto injectors to work? And if they do, do they bring both of them? And it's a good idea for you, if you're the first aider, to know where these are, if they keep them in their locker or their bag or their desk drawer, so that you can get them quickly if you need to. They need to be accessible all the time. So somebody that's having an anaphylactic reaction, you'll be able to tell because they'll get very poorly quite quickly, certainly within 10, 20 minutes. Um, what tends to happen is their eyes will swell, their lips their tongue, their throat will swell quite dramatically or sometimes they're unrecognisable and they'll get this blotchy rash around their face, their neck, their chest, their hands. We call that hive sometimes. Um, and you won't see this obviously, but their whole blood pressure will drop and they, they may collapse. So they'll become very, very ill. If you can give them their EpiPen, or their auto injector and they're able to do it to themselves then fine so your job might be to go and find it because you know where they are and take the lid off and give it to them so they can administer it to themselves but if they're too poorly you might need to do that for them and please do because you'll be saving their life potentially make sure somebody else phones 999 you still need an ambulance even if you give one or both of their auto injectors they must still go to hospital regardless so get somebody to ring 999 as soon as possible and say that somebody's had um, a severe allergic reaction an anaphylactic reaction so i'm going to show you how these work now they're usually in um, a, a, a clear tube so open the lid of the tube and tip it out. Now I'll show you the EpiPen first of all. And these are all trainer pens, by the way. There's no needles in any of these. Um, they're for people to practice with. And if you've got a colleague with anaphylaxis, ask them if they've got trainer pens. Perhaps they can bring them in and show you how to practice with them, how to use them. Please don't practice with a real one. You'll regret that um, <laughs> a lot. So you make sure you practice with the trainer pens. So an EpiPen... Um, you've got a blue cap on the top and the orange bit is where the needle will be. So the, uh, the, the little rhyme that you can say is blue to sky, orange to thigh. So that's a good way to remember which way up it goes. Pretty obvious really, this ends pointed. Blue to sky, orange to thigh. So take the blue safety cap off. Now you can either sit the person down or it might be better to lie them down. 
I'd lie them on the floor, they're safe there, aren't they? And we always put an auto injector in their upper outer thigh. It doesn't go anywhere else. It doesn't go in the backside, it doesn't go in their stomach. Upper outer thigh. Make sure you don't do it over the top of um, a seam because you don't have to get them to take the clothes off. You can go through clothing, but make sure it's not on the seam of jeans or trousers or anything like that. Hold the auto injector in your fist and you're going to swing and jab fairly hard and you want to make sure that it goes in at a right angle you don't want it to go in at a funny angle so it's got to go in at a right angle to their leg so if you listen you'll hear it click hold it there for a few seconds just to allow the adrenaline to drain into the person EpiPen are now saying that only takes three seconds and you, there should be a little window on it and you'll see that the fluid has gone through that little window. So I'll just reset this so I can show you again. The cap on. So there's your auto injector, tip it out of the tube. Blue cap comes off in your fist at a right angle. Swing and jab, hold it there for at least three seconds with an EpiPen and let it come back out again. So just be careful when you do swing and jab, it doesn't bounce back out again straight away. You need to let it um, hold it there while the, the adrenaline um, goes into the person. There's another one here called Jext that you might see. It's a similar thing to the EpiPen, isn't it? You take the yellow cap, the safety cap off, and again, hold it in your fist, swing and jab, and count um, to five seconds a Jextis, exactly the same. And then you've lastly got the Emirate. Again, take the safety cap off, hold it in your fist, right angle to the leg, upper outer thigh, swing and jab. And you're gonna hold this one for 10 seconds. Now, that's a bit of a nightmare, knowing that they're all different seconds, different timings to hold them there. So do you know what? Make it easy, just hold it there and count to 10. No matter what you've got, you haven't got to remember then, oh, that one's five seconds, that one's ten seconds. That, it's ridiculous. While these manufacturers have all decided that it's different timings, just hold it there for ten seconds and that will be absolutely fine. Once you've done it, you might want to give it a bit of a rub if it's hurting, you know, just to make them feel a bit better and wait for the ambulance to come. If they're no better after about five minutes, certainly 10 minutes, I would definitely be grabbing their second auto injector and giving that to them as well. You can't overdose on this, so don't worry that you're going to hurt them. You're absolutely not. You can either do it in the same leg or in the other leg. It doesn't matter whichever one you're nearest to and whichever one is facing you and comes first, really. I hope that's been useful. Um, oh, by the way, they might have got this out to show you. Some people who've got anaphylaxis will have their auto injector and they might have a little guide with them in their pocket, in their bag, in their purse. Um, just shows you again how to use instructions for use and what, what they look like. Um, so have a, have a look for that or ask them if they've got one that you could keep if you're the first aider at work um, and you can refer to that. That might be quite useful for you. I hope that's been useful about administering um, auto injectors or EpiPens if you want to call them that. Um, if you want to find out more about me, go to my website skylarkfirstaid.co.uk or I'm on Facebook and Instagram, so that's at skylarkfirstaid. Thank you for watching.